So the other day I was sat at my desk ordering in a few supplies of Amazon as you do and then a thought popped into my head I wonder what the best selling watch is on Amazon. So of course I had to do a search so I quickly popped into the search bar best selling men's watch on Amazon and this is what popped up. In first place there you can see we've got the Casio standard which to be honest wasn't a surprise to me but what did take me by surprise was this a megalith. Now at the time when I initially first purchased this watch it was sat at the number two position on this best selling list however since then I've checked every day and this list does seem to change day to day so this specific watch one day will be on second position sometimes fifth sometimes third fourth and so on so this list does seem to change daily for some reason. Anyway regardless of this it just took me by surprise because on this list I was expecting to see quite a few Casios maybe even the likes of Time Timex, Seconda, maybe even a Seiko, but no, we got this megalith which I've never even heard of before, along with a few other brands on there as well which I'd never heard of, so I was quite taken back. So of course this got me intrigued because any watch that lands on this best-selling list on Amazon, especially in second place, must be quite of a big deal, right? So there was only one thing to do, I just had to click the listing and find out more about it. So when we clicked on the watches listing, we saw that it had got quite a lot of positive reviews with an overall star rating of 4.4 out of 5. And for anyone that knows me, they know that I love a good review, I love reading what people have got to say. So I just had to click on this and see what people were actually saying about it, especially for a brand that I've never even heard of before. The general consensus of the reviews basically said that this watch is easy to use, it's comfortable and that most people find it good value for money. However, of course, like anything, there were a few bad eggs thrown in there, with one person stating that the watch strap had actually broken after a few times of wear, and a few others were complaining about the water resistance and some other functional complications as well. So I decided to scroll back up on the listing just to check out a bit more of the product spec, and then I saw this a £133 price discount from £169.99 to a banging £36.99, what a bargain. Or maybe more like a red flag. So there was only one thing to do and here it is. I know I can't believe I got suckered in but I'm just going to help myself. I've got to see why the people of Amazon just love this watch so much and why it deserves to be on that best selling list. But before we delve into this watch I did have to do some background research first which thinking on it I probably should have done before buying the watch but hey ho what if I were to miss out on that absolute bargain. So first up I did a quick google search just to see what this brand was all about and if anyone's ever been talking about them. On a few forum pages I found people asking questions about the brand but overall it turns out that this brand is pretty much nowhere else to be found other than on Amazon and their own website which gives a great story about the brand and who doesn't love a good story. According to their bio, Megalith are a Chinese company that were founded by a guy named David. Fresh out of university, David decided that he wanted to create an affordable watch brand with the intent of his watches being the first watch that every man owns in his life, which is quite an admirable mission. Instead of breaking the bank on just one expensive timepiece that we may only wear on special occasions, David believes that people should instead be able to buy a multitude of fashionable and good quality affordable watches that the wearer can swap out and change for whatever occasion suits them. So in short, it's Megalift's mission to produce some affordable watches that are kind of contemporary and fashionable looking and also deliver on the quality aspect. And with this watch pricing at just $36.99 on Amazon, David seems to be ticking at least one of those boxes. But sorry, can we just take note of David's sass here where he takes aim at luxury watch owners saying that they're kind of just buying these watches to flaunt off their financial success. This did make me laugh to be honest. So let's see if David can convert me away from being a luxury watch poser into a megalith lover. And hey, maybe by the end of this review, David will have convinced me to buy 134 of these bad boys instead of that one candy pink oyster that I so desperately want. And I'll even have change left for a Mackie's on the way home. Yeah. Result. So spec wise, this watch is powered by a quartz movement, which is expected from a low cost piece. So we can't mount too much here, to be honest, especially when we've got the likes of Swatch charging £240 for their quartz movements on their plastic moon swatches. However, saying this, it is important to note that although the principles of quartz movements are the same, they aren't all made the same. So it's likely that when buying a budget watch like this, it will be a lower grade mechanism overall. 
But we have had this watch for a few weeks now and it's remained accurate still. So I can't complain here really, especially not for a watch that price is just over 30 quid. However, as time goes on, I will keep note of the accuracy and durability of this watch. I will list it in the comments down below. So do just keep an eye on the comments to see what happens with this watch. The watch size is up at 46 millimeters in diameter, which means I can't model it for you guys because it's way too big for me. But here it is on Jack's seven and a half inch wrist. As you can see, it's very oversized even on Jack's wrist to be honest. So definitely geared towards those larger wrists that can compensate for that huge lug to lug distance on this one. It does sit quite close to the wrist though, thanks to its 12 millimeter thickness. And overall, the watch is quite light too, which is great if you do prefer a lightweight watch but not so great for David's plan to disguise this as a higher end luxury piece. Unfortunately, it just doesn't have that same weightiness that you'd expect from a high end watch. Looking at the dial, you can see that we've got quite a fairly stylish design to be honest, which I suppose does tick David's box of wanting to provide a somewhat contemporary looking fashionable timepiece. We've got a nice brownish color on here with a waffle pattern on there as well. A little bit like what we see on the Tissot PRX in fact. On the dial we've also got a chronograph complication which initially I was very skeptical about because I've experienced a lot of cheap watches where the complications either break after a short time of use or they just don't work full stop. The hands on the subdial don't align perfectly at the 12 o'clock position which is a bit annoying but right now for the most part it does still seem to be functional. Again, as I mentioned just, if any updates do happen with this watch in terms of functionality, I will list it down in the comments down below. But right now, I can't comment on the long-term durability and functionality of this watch. There's actually been some nice attention to detail paid on this dial, to be honest. The hands, numeral markers and subdials have all been decorated with nice coppery accents, which for a watch at this price point is quite good because I have seen many watches more expensive than this that do skimp out on these finer details. The dial itself is quite deep too, with those nice minute track cutouts around the numerals, which give the dial quite a nice sense of depth with a 3D-ish effect to be honest, especially with that waffle pattern as well being set back amongst everything. Now, most budget watches do have their cases made up from a zinc alloy, but the case on this one is said to be made up from stainless steel, according to the description on Amazon. Also, the case sounds very tinny, so I will tap it against the mic just for you to have a listen. I know that does echo as well through the, um, well, it's not sapphire crystal, it's actually glass on this. So it does sound even more tinny than what I expect, to be honest with you. But that does mean that Megalith are either lying about the material used on the case, or this is just a very, very low grade stainless steel that's being used. Obviously, David has tried to make up for this though by coating the metal in the same copper colour that we've got on the dial, which to be honest, does help to push that luxurious feel just a little bit more. But again though, I can't comment on the absolute durability of this coating because we haven't had it for that long. So I'd imagine that it is quite a super light coating that won't last too long. The case shape itself is pretty standard. We don't have any tapering on the lugs, which is to be expected really. And we don't have multiple finishes on the case either, like what we get with most high-end watches. But again, for the price point, we can't really complain. It is a high polish finish overall, which does again help to push that luxurious feel a little bit that David wants to achieve. And to further try and push that luxurious feel, we've got the addition of some fake screws on the bezel. And to be honest with you, for a 30 pound piece here, I must say that the crown and pushers are fairly okay. They are better than what I expected them to be. Firstly, they actually work, which is a surprise in itself. And secondly, when comparing them to other watches at this price point, they do have a much more thought out design. As you can see here, there are a few budget watches in this price point that have flat looking and boring crowns and pushers, and they often don't include crown guards either. So a bit of credit to Megalith here. The guards surrounding the pushers though are just for show. They don't actually lock the pushers in place. And to be honest, the pushers don't take a lot of force to actually initiate them. So the possibility of accidental knocks is quite high here. And they also don't feel like super quality pushers, to be honest with you. It does seem all about the design. As for the strap, in my opinion, this is absolutely hideous. Sorry, David, but I do give points for ambition here, but it's just not stylish at all, in my opinion. David started to really lose me on this one. It's obviously made of rubber, and at that, it's not a fantastic grade of rubber either, which I know is quite picky when we're talking about a 30 pound watch, but I do think that quality has been sacrificed here. I'd rather not see those ugly metal inserts in there. 
and would much rather have had more attention spent on improving the quality of the strap. Saying that though, the strap is quite soft, so it does feel nice against the wrist, but I am skeptical on the durability just because of how soft it is. And if you remember back to the reviews when we first started this video, there were a few people on there saying that this strap had broken a few times after wear. David also loses a point for me here with the buckle. I think that Megalift just could have at least gone to the effort of matching this to that copper colour seen on the rest of the watch and also refined it slightly because at the moment it just feels clunky and a bit of an odd part on there. As for the case back, on this one it's pretty simple. It's just a snap-on thing as you'd expect and it's also said to be composed of stainless steel. And interestingly enough, I see a little engraving on there that says 3 ATM water resistance which doesn't mean that the watch is waterproof like what a lot of people seem to think it means on Amazon. This actually means that the watch is basically just resistant to light water exposure, such as hand washing and the occasional rain shower. Anything more than that and you're very likely to get water inside this watch. So the question is, has David convinced me away from buying that lovely candy pink oyster that I so desperately want? And to be honest with you, I'd be lying if I said yes. However, credit where credit's due, for a £30 Chinese wristwatch, this isn't the worst thing that I've ever seen. But would I recommend this watch? And in all honesty, the answer I'd give is no. The reason being is that with cases like this, I've been around it for too long now, you really do get what you pay for. And although this watch is only £30, it's highly likely that in a few weeks, probably even months time, the functionality of this will have deteriorated quite heavily. I can see why it ranks so highly on Amazon's bestseller list though, just because of that price point. But honestly, there are better watches out there to buy. If you do want to buy a watch at this price point, I'd rather you go for something like a Casio or maybe even push up just slightly to something like a Timex. But at a minimum, for a really good entry level piece, I'd be recommending you to go for something like a Tissot PRX, maybe even a T-Classic. We've got the Seiko 5 Sport or even the Citizen Eco Drive. All of these are fantastic watches at really good entry level prices. And in my opinion, it is better to spend that little bit extra on something that's got a higher quality and will last such a long time. And with that guys, I am signing off. I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's something a bit different to what we usually do. And I will keep an eye on this watch over time in regards to the durability and functionality. And I'll post any important updates in the comments down below. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It really does help us out. Don't forget to leave a comment down below as well and like the video if you did like this one. But yeah, thanks for watching guys and hopefully I'll see you again in the next one.